guys. My name is Bjergsen from Team Solomid, and this is my law class guide to Xerath. So these are the runes I run on Xerath. They're pretty straightforward just to maximize as much damage as you want to get. Xerath is just all about long range poke, and you just want to make sure that coming from your runes and masteries, you don't need much tankiness. You just want to maximize damage. And I have two sets. I have one if you're against a physical damage matchup, and one against normal matchups. These are the masteries I use on Xerath. It's a pretty basic AP mastery page that you can use on almost any AP mage, and it just maximizes damage, mana region, and it gives you pretty much anything you need on an AP caster. On Xerath, I like to do, uh, obviously, always Slash. It's a really mobile champion. You want to have that escape. You want to have it if you want to go in, make some plays. After that, I generally go heal or barrier. It kind of depends on the matchup. There are matchups, really bursty matchups like Syndra or Fizz, where you want to get barrier to survive there all in and you sometimes you want to have heals so you can kite stay alive longer and just have more damage output in the team fight because you can stay alive and kite for a longer period of time for the skill leveling up early i always go q level one w level two in pretty much any matchup level three kind of depends if it's a longer matchup where i think an extra level in q is going to benefit me for the poke i'll go an extra level in q if I feel like I'm going to need this stun for either a hard trade or if I'm going to get ganked or have my jungler gank, I go stun at level 3. I always end up maxing Q first and W second just for the long range and poke. Xerath's item build is pretty straightforward in general. Uh, you start out with the Doran's Ring, two potions, War Trinket, like almost any other AP mage, and you just want to get Athenes as fast as possible. Uh, I prefer going Chalice, but if you're having an easy time, you can definitely go Codex and then build into Athenes afterwards, but... Athenes and Sorcerer's Boots with the Blue Trinket for the ultimate. I think that's really the core items that you want to reach on Xerath because you reach that really strong mid-game point where you can start sieging down towers and just poking enemies out of their lands. Some of Xerath's strengths are he has really long-range poke. He has really high damage. He has great scaling. The longer you go in the game with Xerath, the stronger you're going to be. Pretty much the only thing that can stop you is something like Banshees, but other than that, he has good damage, long range. He has a CC, he has a stun that can go up to two seconds. He has a semi-global ultimate. It can go pretty much across the map. At level 16, it's more than half across the map, I think. And I do think his laning phase is pretty strong. I think Zerith's weaknesses would be that he's really immobile and squishy. He's really hard to get away from assassins or people flanking you or uh, champions with gap closures and jumps in general. And he's also really skill shot reliant. You pretty much have to land your stun. If you miss your stun, you're really vulnerable and pretty much anyone can jump you anytime. I think Zerith is actually pretty strong in solo queue. I usually have a lot of success on him. His landing phase is fairly strong, so you do come out ahead a lot. The main thing is that you want to communicate with your team and you want to make sure as soon as you're hitting your power spike, like I was talking about earlier, the Athene Sword Boots or even a later one is that they group up and they start sieging with you as a team. You group up as five, you really have to take the initiative, be a leader and say, we should group up here, we should do this together because Xerath is all about being with your team, having the team peeling for you while you do damage from afar. I think Xerath's landing actually is extremely good. When you get a couple levels and get a blue buff maybe, you can start poking out the enemy and just slowly poking him out of lane and forcing a kill with either or a stun or your ultimate. Xerath's all-in teamfight is not as good as some other champions. As he is more about poking and he's more about the setup to the teamfight. But if you get the proper setup, you get the poke before, I think he's a great team fighter, but he's not as much... If a teamfight just happens to break out, he's not as good as an Oriana or something like that. I think the my first tip and also really the main thing you learn about Xerath is when to use your stun. You can't just randomly throw out your stun hoping for it to land if it's very unlikely. You need to really calculate it because every time your stun is down, you're vulnerable to ganks, you're vulnerable to people trading you. It's extremely hard to land your other spells once your stun is down. So it's really watch out when you use your stun. It's important you know exactly why you're using your stun and when. Another thing is when you want to use your passive. I see a lot of Xerath players that uh, every time their passive is up, they walk up to either auto a creep or auto the enemy champion without really thinking about maybe your spells is down, maybe their jungler could be nearby, maybe you're just weaker overall than the enemy champ. And as, as you walk up to get that mana back, you get ganked, you get traded, you get all in, and you get killed. So you really need to watch out when you want to use your passive. There are some times where I wait like, five, even ten seconds, because I just can't walk up and hit the creeps. So watch out, Xerath is a squishy champion, and you can't just always walk up and auto something. I hope you learned something. I hope you have something that you can take away from this. If you have any more questions, you can always tweet at me at Bjergsen, and there's a pretty good chance I'll reply. See you next time.